asked by someone, there are things that I'm not so good at, and there are other things I'm better at, and I've got some things that I'm sh I've short shortcomings in, and other things I can do better. Surely is there only one way to Jannah? And the answer is Alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned so many numerous ways for a person to go to paradise and be saved from the fire. Rasul Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught us so many ways and inshallah tonight we'll enumerate uh, some of them and teach you what it means inshallah ta'ala to give us hope and to know who Allah is and to know how generous he is and to assume well of your Lord and to not let the shaitan make you pessimistic and to get rid of any of those mental intrusions that tell you you're not good enough. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is kareem and rahim and alhamdulillah whoever assumes him even well will get closer to him insha'Allah. I begin with about four verses of the Quran as an introduction to this. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, A'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim, bismillahi ar-rahman ar-rahim. وَمَا تَفْعَلُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ بِهِ عَلِيمٌ And whatever good that you do, of, and whatever good that you do, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all knowing of it. Allah also says, وَمَا تَفْعَلُوا مِنْ خَيْرٍ يَعْلَمُ اللَّهُ Any little tiny thing of a good deed that you do, Allah knows it for sure. In another verse, Allah says, فَمَن يَعْمَلْ مِثْقَالَ ذَرَّةٍ خَيْرًا يَرَهِ Any small ant's worth of a good deed someone does, Allah knows it and sees it. And finally, Allah says, مَنْ عَمِلَ صَالِحًا فَلِنَفْسِهِ Whoever does good deeds, the benefit is for himself. The benefit is for himself. Therefore, nothing, nothing harms Allah or benefits Allah in any way. And I always say a good example to think about it is your parents who love you and love their children. They don't want anything in return. Good parents who truly have unconditional love for their children from the moment they're born, their future, they're already envisioning it. And they're looking forward to you growing up and being happy and healthy. And the question we ask is why? What do parents get out of it? They don't get money out of it. They don't get uh, fame out of it. They don't, I mean, they're aging. So a good parent and a loving parent doesn't want anything in return. The only reward they want is that their child is righteous, grows up well and healthy, makes dua for them after they pass away. <coughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives us the example of parents and he always puts their name with his name in the Quran. They're the only people Allah mentions alongside his name. وَقَضَى رَبُّكَ أَلَّا تَعْبُدُوا إِلَّا إِيَّهُ وَبِالْوَالِدَيْنِ إِحْسَانًا Your Lord has decreed that he worship none other but him and to be dutiful to your parents. Because your creation came from Allah first and then through them. And so there is gratitude that we give them and for them there is unconditional love and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he doesn't want anything in return except believe it or not, just for your own good. Just for your own good. We begin with the first hadith relating to this that I want to share with you. And the hadith explains the meaning of the word Iman. So the question is, what is Iman? What is faith in the Islamic terms? I think still some people will misinterpret it or give a different answer to what it really is. Some people will say it's what you believe in. But that's not the meaning of Iman, of faith. The Prophet ﷺ said, Iman is 70 something. Bid'un wa sab'un. 70 something. He didn't say a number, he just said somewhere between 70 and 79 in the Arabic language. Or, he said, he said, or 60 something. So he's telling us somewhere in that range. 
Iman is 70 something or about 60 something categories and channels, categories. The best of all of its categories is the word La ilaha illallah, saying and believing truly and acting upon there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. Complete monotheism in belief, words and actions to monotheism. Then he said, and the least of all its categories is to remove a harmful object off the road. And then he said, and the balance of it all, the middle, is called haya, which means modesty and, and respect, self-respect. Haya. It's kind of a shyness or a sh shyness, but in a good way, in a mod modesty way. You know, we have this natural shyness that we don't go out naked. We don't show our awra. This is part of modesty and shame. Haya. When we're alone, we know Allah is watching us and He told us there are angels around us. We get a bit shy. How can we do bad things while Allah is watching me? When we are alone with our spouses, we fear Allah. Allah is watching us. We feel shame. When we are doing business and we are able to cheat or to uh, rip off someone and they won't know about it, but we have shame. It's called haya. All these examples are called haya, and it is the middle, the balance of all the 70 something branches, branches or categories of Iman. Without haya, without modesty and shame, you will not have monotheism properly, and you will not have good acts properly. And if, for example, a person with modesty and self-respect and watchfulness or has integrity <clears throat> sees something that harms people off the road and can move it but doesn't care probably even adds more harm for the people because they have no shame a person may reject something that Allah says and not care that Allah is the one who said it and just choose their own version. They'll say, I think it's like this, so I won't accept it. He has no shame or she has no shame. You think, who, am, who is Allah? This is, no shame. This, is, this is disbelief actually. So shame and modesty is the balance of all your deen. Now here in this hadith, the Prophet peace be upon him did not enumerate all the branches, he didn't name them. There's no need. But what it means is that it's the entire religion of Islam. And Iman therefore means the action of the heart, the action of the tongue, and the action of the limbs. That is all called what? Iman. The hadith is muttafaq alayh in Bukhari and Muslim. So now you understand, if you or I do any good act, no matter how big or small, helping someone, counseling someone, lending someone, giving someone, donating to someone, guiding someone, saying, greeting someone, anything, a smile. All these acts are called in Islam, they're called Iman, faith, on one condition. The condition is, listen to what the Prophet ﷺ said, the highest of its branches is La ilaha illallah, there is no God worthy of worship except Allah. Therefore, everything under that word we do it because of our faith and belief in Allah. A person may say, well, hold on a minute. Islam is not a condition for a person to have good character. You can have good character without being a Muslim. That is true. But the meaning of this is two. Number one, a true believer should have these characteristics. Otherwise, your belief in Islam is not complete. And secondly, the difference between a Muslim and non-Muslim having good character is that the Muslim does their good character for worldly reasons and for the rewards, love and closeness to Allah, their Creator. Big difference. One does it for the sake of love and goodness. The other one does it for the sake of Allah first 
and then for the sake of love and goodness. For example, you might love your mother tremendously and so you serve her and help her only because she's your mother. That's a virtuous thing. But you can add double and say, I help my mother because I love her and at the same time to please my Creator Allah. When you want to please your Creator Allah, then you will do good things even against your own feelings. And you will stay away from bad things even against your own feelings. Because there is a huge reason why you should keep going on and doing good deeds. If the person who you do good deeds to does not repay you, or people harm you or hurt you with words, still a believing Muslim knows, well at least my reward is not lost with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Please don't misunderstand me, I'm not saying place your cheek on the ground for people to step on it. I'm not telling you to turn the other cheek and let people ridicule you. This is disrespect to yourself. But what it means is that with any opportunity for you to establish peace, to avoid trouble, to do good deeds, to help someone change from bad to good, to avoid someone's harm for the sake of Allah, is the character of the believer. But if somebody attacks you, somebody denigrates you, somebody tries to take your right, a Muslim must be courageous and defend their right if they cannot avoid it in any other way. So both of them are Iman. And that is called self-respect as well. My dear brothers and sisters, moving on now. <clears throat> now that you understood the word Iman means the actions of the heart, the tongue and the limbs, do you remember this beautiful hadith I mentioned to you that is in Sahih Muslim called Shafa'atul Mu'mineen? The inter intercession of the believers to one another on the Day of Judgment. Do you remember that hadith? Anyone remember when I mentioned it here in past classes? The intercession of believers to one another on the Day of Judgment. Yes? No? Hands up if you have. Shafa'atul Mu'mineen. I might as well pack my bags. And leave here. I'm just coming to another. No, nobody remembers that. I think I've said it about six times. No? Hasbunallah. Yeah, let's all right. We'll repeat it. Follow me. Follow me on YouTube. So everyone's going to TikTok and Instagram. You're not going to get much there. People cut off one minute of my talks and they take it out of context. And I'm looking and I'm going, why? Why? Why this part? Go to the original source. In YouTube, you'll see the whole context. And I think you'll learn a bit more. <laughs> Don't follow my YouTube. Follow someone else's YouTube. But the point is, get the whole... Learn more, inshallah. Forgive me, brothers and sisters. I don't mean to ridicule anybody. I'm just joking with you. But seriously, follow the YouTube for, to, to go to, um, back to these lessons and teach others and give me some rewards and you earn rewards. All right. So the hadith about shafa'atul mu'mineen, the intercession of the believers to one another, I'll just say in summary. That on the day of judgment from the mercy and generosity of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his forgiveness is that not only does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala save people with his mercy, he gives the angels an opportunity to also have a, have a say in who wants to be saved by the will of Allah. And he gives the prophets and messengers also a say in who they want to be forgiven by the will of Allah. And then he gave the believers as well, inshallah may Allah make us one of them, to also intercede for people, certain people, with his will. And the shafa'ah, this intercession, means that when people cross the sirat, you know in the Qur'an it says a sirat, the, the, the bridge that will be bestowed, in minkum illa wariduha, every single one of you will cross it. Once they make it to the other side, they're going to paradise. And then the believers will turn around and remember the people, the, the friends, the believing friends they, re, they used to have in this world. They did not make it across. They fell into the fire. And then they say, my Lord, my Lord, our Lord, we remember so and so and so and so. They used to do this, they used to do that. They try to mention all the good deeds which they can remember so that they can get a response from Allah to say, go. So Allah then says to them, go and take out everyone you know. And you see some of them, they haven't gone deep into the fire. Them, 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 Allah saves them after they've been punished a little bit. And then there are those who go deep into the fire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, is there anyone else? And they say, Ya Rabbi, we can't see them. He says, they've probably gone... The hadith doesn't say that they haven't gone deep, but that's what it means. He says, go and take out anybody with the angels, anybody who has a coin's worth of iman. They go and they take them out. Then he says, go back and take out whoever's got half a coin's worth of iman. Now, 
We're a bit confused. What do you mean a coin's worth of Iman, half a coin of Iman? What does it mean? Like you half believe in God and half you don't? Half believe in the Quran, half don't? No, it doesn't mean that. You cannot believe in half. Even one ayah you cannot say, I don't believe in. Some of you are saying, God is, astaghfirullah, this is a lie. Iman, from this hadith, now you understand, it is any tiny good deed that you've ever done while you are on Tawheed. On La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah. That means you died while not making partners with Allah or disbelieving in Him, His book and His messengers. You all then have a chance of intercession. And he says, can you remember a tiny half a coin's worth of a good deed? Meaning, let's say you saw them one day walking from school and you saw your mate, your friend, he saw some glass on the pathway and he says, SubhanAllah, someone might trip on this. I heard that I get rewarded from Allah. I'm just going to move it here for goodness and for the sake of Allah. Yeah, and for the sake of Allah, number one, and also because you're a good Muslim, you move it off the road. Let's say that's the only good deed this friend of yours has ever done in his life. Nothing else. So long as he has died on true belief, Allah may allow you, if you are saved, to go and save that friend if you can remember one tiny good deed is done. And that is why, brothers and sisters, and obviously the rest of the hadith is that Allah then takes out a whole lot out of hellfire, out of His mercy. The meaning of this is always have good believing friends, brothers and sisters, because those believing friends are the only ones, according to our Islamic belief, will be the ones on the Day of Judgment who will remember you, and they will vouch for you by the will of Allah to save you with His permission. Always have believing friends. Even if you have friends that are not so good or so believing, have righteous believing friends. They will remember you, bi'ithnillah, by the will of Allah. Anyway, I've just spoken about a Muslim belief here, of course. Non-Muslims will don't know all about this until they learn about Islam. We move now. <clears throat> a person, a pathway to paradise, are so many, the pathways. A pathway to paradise is moving a branch of a tree that is thorny or in the way of people off the road. Why did I mention this? Because there's a hadith about it. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said, I saw in paradise, meaning that Allah let him see, in paradise, a man who is enjoying himself in paradise, He's enjoying himself and doesn't think about anyone else. He's enjoying himself and having a party because of a branch of a tree. Because of one tree branch. He took it off the road because it was harmful to others. In another hadith, it was harmful to the Muslims. Of course, there are other hadiths which say Muslim or anybody. And there are other hadiths which say, even the animals, even the insects. You're probably walking and you see a colony of ants. And you could have stepped on it, but instead you avoided it for the sake of Allah, because they are creatures of Allah. Those ants could make dua for you, supplicate for you, or because of them you enter paradise. The best acts of goodness. One man said, his name is Abu Dhar radiallahu anhu, he says, Ya Rasulullah, Abu Dhar Jundub bin Junada. He said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, which are the most, which are the best acts to do? Which are the best acts to do? He said, True belief and faith in Allah is the best act. Is that an act of the limbs or the tongue or the heart? What do you think? To have correct and proper belief in Allah. Is that the act of the heart, the act of the limbs, or the act of the tongue? All of them, ahsant. It's all of them. But where does it start? In the heart, then the tongue. That's why when a person wants to become a Muslim, they say, I believe. But in order to prove their belief, there is a sign. What do they do? They have to say, I bear witness that there is only one God worthy of worship. Muhammad, peace be upon him, is his final prophet and messenger. Now you're a believer. Now the actions then complete it. 
So the Prophet, peace be upon him, said, Iman Billah, belief and faith in Allah truly is the highest best deed. Wal jihad fi sabili, and to strive and battle in his path. Striving and battling jihad means to ward off evil and bad and injustice with a goal to replace it with justice, goodness and piety. So you don't misunderstand the word, obviously Muslims, we know what the word jihad means. It doesn't mean that every non-Muslim you see, we have to fight them. It doesn't mean that we go to a non-Muslim country and we declare jihad on them. This is wrong. If a country you live in, alhamdulillah, gives you the right, freedom to practice your deen and to build your mosques and to do all that and nobody stands in your way, then there's no need to do anything. In fact, don't migrate there if it's not good. But jihad is when there is a situation like the olden times where there was no laws to protect anybody, there was no treaty, and everybody just attacked everyone else. So Allah said, Muslims, fight to protect yourselves and your religion because you are vulnerable. So you have to stand together. But anyway, striving is many levels. It goes all the way from physical down to the belief. So a person sometimes does jihad against their own desires. They do jihad against their own ideology and thoughts and whispers. They do jihad against their own laziness, for example. They go to work and they want to provide for their elderly parents or their children or their spouse or their family. It is a type of jihad as well. Everything that involves striving against irritation, against negativity, in order to establish goodness, is a level and a form of jihad and mujahada, striving and struggling for good. Then he said, what's after that, Ya Rasulullah? He said, if you know of any slave that is still under its master and you have the ability to buy them and free them, then that comes third. So the first one is establishing Allah's belief. Second one is protection of the community. And third, to free people who are in bondage in under slavery. And then he said, and the best ones to free are the ones that people sell them for a big price. Now this doesn't matter to us right now. I'm just showing you the, the, the generosity of Islam. In those days, there used to be different types of slaves. Those who were... Uh, very expensive and those who were cheap and Islam encouraged to free slaves in many different forms and ways it could not abolish slavery completely yet why because they would have become public property according to the universal law it's not like today so you have to look in context Islam is the only deen that came which brought such measures that gave slaves rights that no one ever knew before to the point where you would see a master and slave and you won't tell the difference. You can't tell the difference. And they were encouraged to marry them if they can. And if they gave birth, they encouraged them to free them. And if they could get a skill, they were encouraged to free them and he could buy himself out. And we were encouraged that if we do major sins, we can go and buy and free a slave to get our sins to go away, and so on and so on. So Islam came to systematically abolish all of this as much as it can. So the Prophet ﷺ said, freeing slaves, they also are among the best deeds. He said, then what, Ya Rasulullah? He said, then if you can't do any of that, help to upskill someone with a skill. You might know an organization, or a mosque that has a project that is offering courses, for example, training, workshops, education, a school maybe, and you are able to financially help and support them in some way to educate people in the community. The Prophet ﷺ said, then after that comes the deed of upskilling someone else. 
helping someone else build knowledge so that they can look after themselves. That is the fourth category the Prophet ﷺ said. He said, what if I can't afford that, O Messenger of Allah? He said, do something good. Do something good with your own skill. So you have a skill yourself. Maybe you do a trade. Maybe you've got a business. Maybe you have some resources. But you can't afford to upskill someone else. So then use your own resources and skills to give, donate a bit of your time and skill for some projects or for someone else. For example, some people might be called to a home. You go to a, a brother or sister's home who've got uh, some problems in their tiles or their heater or their conditioner or let's say your work is something else. Is there a, you're a, you're, you're a, you're a conveyancer, or you're a builder, or you're an engineer, or you're a doctor, or whatever you are. This is all a skill and knowledge. And you offer some of that of free service. Or you give extra to help them. Bonuses. Out of goodwill. All this that Rasul said, then do that. He said, what if I don't have a skill to give? He said, then if you can't find any good deed to do, Keep your harm away from people. Just don't harm anyone. Is there anything more than that? If you can't do any good at all, then avoid harming anyone. With your words, with your actions, with your money, with anything. He said, then that, just avoid harming people. Amazing. And then he said, if you do that, it will be a sadaqah, an act of charity or an act of goodness from you for yourself. The hadith is muttafaq alayhi, agreed upon, Bukhari and Muslim. There are more levels. Another man said, Ya Rasulullah, talk to me, tell me. And he said, teach me something. He said, every Muslim must give sadaqah, every Muslim must give charity. What does charity mean here? It's got two meanings. Who can tell me? Sadaqa in Islamic terminology has two meanings. Sadaqa means the obvious one. What is it? Money or property. Give from your money, charity, donations. And what's the other meaning of sadaqa? Okay, example is time. But it's not just time. Sadaqa means anything that you have to give. For example, if I greeted my brother over here, Assalamu Alaikum, that's from my goodness. I used my tongue, I used my mouth, I used my goodness to greet him. Then he greets me, we both did sadaqah. I saw a man, uh, let's say I see this young man here, he doesn't look very happy. I came and say a couple of words and I made him smile. That's a sadaqah. Someone is in pain, I come up to them and I help them across the road, or I help them to sit down, that's a sadaqah. Do you understand now? All of these are called acts of goodness. There's a reason why I say this. We're going to come back. So he said, O Messenger of Allah, what is it? He said, every Muslim must give sadaqah every day. And then a man said, O Messenger of Allah, what if he doesn't have a charity to give? Yani the man thought that it's only money. So then he said, Ya'malu biyaday. Let him do something with his hands and benefit himself. Benefit himself is an act of charity. Yes, you can also be charitable to your, to yourself. This body that you and I have, who does it belong to? Allah. So what are you doing with it? Why is it with you? Hmm? Did you choose to have this body when you were born? Obviously not. So we as Muslims know, Allah told us, Allah gave it to you. So why is it with you? What are you supposed to do with it? Okay, worship Allah, but also? The reason you worship Allah is for yourself, so that you can establish your identity and your closeness to Him. It's not for Allah. He gave you that body. Part of the reason is it is a trust. A trust. It's an amanah. We are entrusted with our bodies to look after it, to serve it, to feed it, but of course not to be stingy. And not to be selfish. So the man said, Ya Rasulullah, what if I can't give to others? He said, then work with your own hands and give yourself. Meaning, don't become a beggar. 
Don't go and be a burden on others to give you. Go out of your way. Don't be lazy. Do something to feed yourself. Why is that an act of charity? Number one, you are looking after the body Allah gave you. And number two, you are avoiding burdening others. You are not a burden on the community. <coughs> that in itself is an act of charity for yourself. What do you get rewarded for? <laughs> what do you need more than that, brothers? That's amazing. Do you remember when I spoke about Umar ibn al-Khattab? He entered the masjid and he saw a young man sitting there praying, reading Quran, making zikr. Do you remember that? <coughs> Hands up if you remember that. One, two, three, four. Good. The rest of you, go on my YouTube. <laughs> now, he entered and he saw this young man praying, doing dhikr, Quran. And he said, who? He asked, who feeds this young man? Who looks after this young man? He's sitting here all day, all night in the mosque. To us, we think, whoa, he's a great Muslim, man. I wish I could do that. But Umar al-Khattab saw it differently. He said, who looks after him? Surely he has to eat. Surely he has to clothe himself. Shelter himself. He said, wallah, his older brother, ya Amir al-Bu'minin. His older brother. He said, his older brother is better than him. His older brother is better than that man sitting in the mosque all day, all night. Then he went up to the young man and nudged him and said, get up. Go and work and don't be a burden on others. Islam did not create sickness. <laughs> Amazing. <laughs> Rasul then said, what if, uh, the man said, then what if I can't work to support myself? He said, then help someone else who, who needs guidance. Yani, for example, he said, let's say you're in a town and somebody's asking for directions. And you know the directions. Give them directions. Somebody needs water. Direct them to water. Anything, anything of helping others. Then he said, what if I can't even find someone like that? He said again to him, then withhold harming anybody. Then it is a sadaqah, a charity. Now, the next good act is the actual charity. Actual charity. But listen to what the Prophet ﷺ said. He said, There isn't any one of you except that Allah will speak to them on the Day of Judgment. Their Lord will speak to them. There will be no interpreter between you and Him, Subhana, Allah. And then you look to your right. He looks to his right and looks to his left and all he sees is his deeds. What he did and what he didn't do. Then he looks in front and looks behind him and all he sees is what he did and what he didn't do. And then he looks beneath him and all he sees is the fire. Then the Prophet peace be upon him said, so fear Allah, meaning prevent yourselves, protect yourselves from the fire, even if all you have is half of a date. To give in charity. Date is this big. Half of it. Eat half and give another one in charity. You are protecting yourself from the fire.